Welcome back to another episode of the Casey Campbell podcast. Casey Campbell with you, of course. We are pleased to be joined by Courtney Crone, of course, who will be competing in the VP um, Sports Car Challenge um, in a few weeks at Daytona. Uh, how's it going? It's going great. Finally got everything set in stone for the year and really excited to announce about the IMSA Diverse Driver Scholarship. So everything's been going really great. So yeah, talk about talk about um, being a part of that and, and winning that. Um, what, what did that mean to you? Because I know that, you know, I know, you know, your kind of your driving career is kind of taking you uh, to the sports car route. And it's just, um, uh, what does that mean to you, Courtney? Well, it's with the background that I've had through dirt racing and starting to go into the formula cars and making the jump over to IMSA and starting in the prototypes, I can say that to me, it's kind of a big deal to feel like a family in the series that you're racing in. So IMSA really does a great job of making you feel welcome and making you feel kind of like you're at home. And it's made a big impact on me. And now to be the IMSA diverse driver winner, um, it's, it is an honor. And for me, it shows that a lot of my hard work has really started to pay off and that people are actually noticing uh, the hard work that I've put in for the last three years in IMSA. And so it's really great to be recognized for that. So going into uh, this season, um, of course, you're going to be competing uh, in the VP uh, Sports Car Challenge of competing with uh, 47 Motorsports, a very accomplished team. Um, I think that won a, won a few championships uh, um, very recently. So uh, kind of talk about that for a second. How excited are you to uh, get down to Daytona? Because I know you're going to be part of the uh, – uh, it's going to be part of the Roar before the 24th of, for, for people that might not know. That's the week before uh, the actual Rolex 24 at Daytona begins. Yeah, getting back with 47 Motorsports I think is going to be really amazing coming into this year. Last year I – made a change and drove the uh, the Ligier, but coming back to the Dakin, I think it's going to be a great car for our sprint race formats. And 47 Motorsports has been a clearly proven team in the last handful of years, winning a championship and prototype challenge. So I think coming into the Roar, we've been doing a lot of, uh, a lot of work, a lot of work going into the season and was just over at the shop this past week and the seat fit and I will say after the last two years, I'm going to share a car with a teammate. Um, it is very nice to get, you know, kind of a seat done and fitment to myself. So we were working really hard on getting that all set in stone. And yeah, I think we're going to have a lot of good momentum going into this year. And, and these races, um, for many people that might not know, they're not 24 hours or they're not the annual, the typical two hour race or two hour, 30 minute race that you most see on, on the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship or the um, or the Mission Pilot Challenge, these are only forty five minute sprint races. So how how just kind of talk about that and yeah and just driving in those races and how much right. how much it affects you know if you start in the back qualifying and all that it just makes it that more important. Yeah, qualifying is going to be a big deal going into the year because you know you only have forty five minutes and now combined with the GT four cars, it's going to be crucial to be able to manage that traffic, which is something I haven't done for a while, but my background has all been sprint race style racing, whether it was racing an SCCA where you do 30 or 40 minute races or racing a midget for 30 laps. And uh, so I'm really excited to get back into that groove because the last few years having to do the prototype challenge you're doing that endurance race you're having to get in after your teammate just got done with an hour and the car is a little bit different maybe not exactly the way it started the race so um going into these 45 minute races it will be super crucial obviously with qualifying and whatnot but really it's going to be managing the traffic and you know just really seeing what the difference between the lmp3 and the gt4 cars is going to be because as of right now, nobody really knows how quickly are we going to catch those, you know, GT4 cars. So it's going to be interesting and it's going to be a lot of fun and it's going to be exciting. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. So 
let's kind of go into, since this is the first time we've ever had you on this channel. So usually what I typically like to do is uh, kind of get to know you uh, and your racing career. Like, so just talk about how you got your start and just go from there. Got my start at, really it was two years old. My dad put me on a motorcycle and started going at two years old and didn't stop. And at five years old, I got into a quarter midget and that's when I really started racing and um, basically raced quarter midgets until I was about 10 years old. By the end of that, kind of had a period of time where I knew my next jump, I wanted it to be into the Ford Focus midget uh, class, but you had to be 12 years old. So me and my dad were kind of like, what do, what do we do for two years? So I'd actually jumped on a Speedway motorcycle for a couple of years going to speedway races since I was born and thought that might not be a bad idea. So I actually raced speedway for quite a few, you know, about three years and we did pretty good on that. And really uh, I attribute a lot of my success even now into the, into the prototypes, just being able to find partners and funding through the speedway really launched my ability to even make it as far as I have now, which is, kind of ironic people wouldn't think that but um yeah eventually got into the focus midget um did a couple races and was really fortunate enough to uh, meet tom malloy that owns trench shoring and he put me in his uh midget for a couple of seasons and kind of dabbled in some sprint cars here and there and and really established myself mostly focused on oval dirt racing for quite a few years up until i was about 16 and really, really liked that path, but an opportunity came up to uh, do a scholarship for the World Speed Formula Speed 2.0 car. And uh, I ended up winning the scholarship and did a season in the Formula Speed car here on the West Coast in uh, some SCCA races. And by the end of the first season, I was kind of thinking to myself, wow, I, I really like this road racing. and. Um, I think if I'm going to be serious about it, I really need to put all my focus into that. So stop doing dirt racing, stop doing midgets, sprint cars. And, uh, the next season I put all my focus into that car and we won the championship and really just have been hooked on road racing since and dabbled in various formula cars yeah. in, you know, a cup from 16, 17, 18, 19 did formula 1600 f4 little f3 yeah. um the formula speed car and it all really just led me into the prototypes in 2021 and um was super fortunate to have the opportunity garrett with 47 motorsports gave me the opportunity in 2021 to race with them in prototype challenge and went pretty good and i'm just hooked now so <laughs> i'm uh this will be my third season in the prototypes and i think coming from such a various background of stuff. It's really been exciting, uh, not only for me, but a lot of people that have been around me to really, you know, kind of get to have this experience. You, you, when you look at, you know, your career and stuff, did you ever think that you would, um, that, that you would lead to, did it initially like, was it always sports cars or did you ever want to do like, you know, IndyCar, NASCAR, or something like that? Uh, what led you ultimately to the sports car world? It's actually funny. I had no idea I would end up in sports cars. And uh, the goal for a while was IndyCar and the Indy 500. And it still is. I, I still aspire to race in the Indy 500 and be the first female winner of that. But more importantly, I think when I was looking at my career for the long term, when I was kind of in that place where where do I go from here? I'm racing on the West Coast and formula cars, but I really need to get you know, racing back East because that's where all the competition is. That's where all the series are. And so I actually came across uh, this opportunity in the prototype challenge and uh, my main uh, partner now who is Bob Stallings, who, as most people might remember the Gaines Co uh, red dragon car and the IMSA days, I, I've known Bob for quite a while and I called him up and I just asked him, what are your thoughts on, uh, you know, doing a prototype? What, what do you think? Cause you're the only person I know in IMSA. Cause growing up, I had never watched an IMSA race in my life. And 
really, I had never seen one in person until I showed up to Daytona to race for the first time. And um, so I, he said, it sounds like a great idea. Prototypes are the best. IMSA is awesome. And I said, sounds like a good plan to me. And he came on board to help, you know, partner with me and doing it. And uh, here we are three years later, we're going to have a red dragon this year. So <laughs> it was kind of a, a funny, you know, pathway. But like I said earlier, the more I've gotten involved with IMSA, the more I grow relationships it is an amazing paddock and it is, it is really like a home there. Yeah. And I've, I, I'm just learning to realize that with all the, I mean, all the IMSA interviews I've gotten, it's uh, it's, it's, I, I mean, I've covered IMSA since 2017, but it's just, um, it, it's always been a, a fantastic place to, uh, to, to get to know people, get to know drivers, teams, you know, personnel like that. Um, what is the, what's the goal for you? Um, what's the end all goal? I mean, obviously IMSA, the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship is, is that where you want to be? Yes. I see in a long-term goal, it would be a really great opportunity to be in the GTP series. I think just the new stuff they've implemented with that series has been I mean, it's groundbreaking really to me to see the development they put into that. And the GTP is is really where I'd like to be here in the long term. And um, like I said earlier, the long term goal has always been IndyCar, the Indy 500. But I think as I get more into the IMSA series, um, you know, GTP is has really been really an astounding new class. And I think a lot of people are noticing that. Um, what's a, What's a track that you're most looking forward to this year? I think Lime Rock. Um, we I visited there a couple of years ago, and I actually raced a, a vintage Jaguar XKE, and I never thought I'd get the chance to actually come back and do a race and a prototype there. So when I saw it was on the schedule, I got really excited, and <laughs> I think it's just going to be an absolute animal of a track in that car. So I, I'm really excited to see how we get around that track in the LMP3s. Yeah. Especially in, the, in in those cars, it's like, um, I mean, they don't even let, um, you know, the GTP and the LMP2 categories in there. That's an only, that's a GT only race. So there's not a lot of room at that place. So it's uh, definitely going to be, uh, definitely going to be fun to watch um, when we get to Lime Rock later in the year. Yeah, um, that'll be a good one. Well, let's talk about um, this weekend, um, this coming weekend at Daytona um, for you to bring, um, to, you know, to running the Red Dragon um, kind of bringing that sense of nostalgia back for, you know, longtime followers of sports car racing. Um, what's that going to be like? And, uh, you know, getting back out there and uh, um, getting back to another another season. What do you feel like you need to do uh, to get it done at Daytona? I think this off season has been a, a really big difference than seasons past. Um, there's been a lot more assurance going into this year than there has been in seasons past. Um, just carrying in that red dragon livery is going to be amazing. I think, uh, that's really going to bring a lot of, a lot of really personal emotions for me because it's been a dream of mine for many, many years to, to actually race in the red dragon. And then when it, the program kind of went away, it was okay. I'm still going to keep going and to bring it back with Bob and Linda. And it's just been, it's been very emotional already just putting the red wrap on the car and getting the design done. So it's, it is going to be really, I think one of the biggest seasons of my career. I know it will be one of the biggest seasons of my career and just honored to run that livery for Bob and for Linda. So that's going to be a really big deal. And, you know, just this off season, I I've put in a lot, a lot more work, you know, on myself than I have, because really it's been, you know, finding funding and the, all that same stuff. And like I said, going into this year with a lot more assurance from myself and my partners and Garrett at 47, um, I've been able to focus on myself a lot more and been working with uh, Dr. Jacques Delaire on just the mental side of it all, you know, obviously the physical side and, and really just, Focusing on that a lot more, I think it's going to make a big difference going into this year. All right. 
Well, Courtney Crone, thank you so much for coming on and talking with us and uh, best of luck at Daytona. And we will definitely have you on again at some point later in the year. Thank you so much for having me.